live from the Mistopheles Studios in Stark Bridge Radio. Hey guys, it's uh, Will Martinez here with Dark Fringe Radio, of course, my co-host, as every week, Mr. Oh, there he is, take a listen. Jay, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm just living the dream, my friend. Just living the dream. Another uh, happy hump, hump day. Yeah, hey, yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, middle of the week here. We're recording this podcast, and, um, you know, I... It, we 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 trying to figure out a couple of different uh, topics for this week, but this week we're going to be talking about tulpas, and uh, we'll be getting to all that here in a little bit. So it's a very interesting subject uh, for those that you guys don't know. Just to give you just a, a very brief synopsis, it's basically a thought, the power of thought, and so we'll get into all that here in a second. So, uh, but first, uh, I wanted to let everybody know how you can listen to the podcast. Of course, you can go to our website, darkfringeradio.wordpress.com. Uh, you can go there directly, and uh, you can click any of the links that uh, go right to the streaming sites to listen to our uh, our podcast and all the episodes there. So you can go right there, darkfringeradio.wordpress.com. And if you want to send us any kind of correspondence, if you want to send anything to me or Jay, uh, you can send that to thedarkfringe at gmail.com. Again, that's thedarkfringe at gmail.com. Or if you want to become a guest on the show, um, you can certainly send that request over to us there. So, um, Jay, uh, social media, of course, you can follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dark Fringe Radio. So make sure you guys please go ahead and do that. Go there and make sure you subscribe and like all that stuff there. Uh, we always have new stuff on a daily basis coming out there. So uh, we try to keep new content going and flowing for you guys. So, uh, so make sure you check out that social media. And uh, that's it for the intro, Jay. Anything else to add? No, man. No, it's clean. All right, man. All right. Well, let's uh, get into um, you know one of our – you know primary um you know subjects that uh, or like segments segment. that we have here on our segment. podcast yeah segment oh, thank segment. you Jay. yes segment william <laughs> segment. Uh, i'm deep Bit. in the forest i'm deep in the forest Bit. um <laughs> bro i'm in a i'm in a purple hulk forest bro uh, <laughs> i mean look i'm in outer space i'm yeah look at you yeah light speed there you go. There you go. But uh, so, yeah, one of our segments that we do here is called As the World Burns. And uh, Jay, this has actually become one of our more popular segments now here on the podcast, believe it or not, because you know this is a segment where we just kind of talk about, you know, yeah. uh, more current shit that's happening, current events that's going on. And last week, the last episode, we talked about the monoliths. You remember that, Jay? I do. I do. I do. Yeah. I do. And boy, boy, has that story just exploded a million different ways, hasn't it, huh? Uh, yeah, so crazy you, shit, man. You had one in Utah. That was the first one that were, was reported on and we talked about last week on the podcast. Yep. Uh, and then you had another one that showed up in Romania all of a sudden. Yep. Um, so, and then the first one in Utah obviously disappeared. Um, yep. And then the one in uh, Romania appeared and then disappeared a few days later. Yep. And then there was another one in California. And then another one in San Diego, Las Vegas. Um, so the mystery is solved, Jay. <clears throat> so as all good things must come to an end, uh, <laughs> the mystery has been solved. It wasn't uh, you the know, lizard people? Sorry to say it was not the lizard people. You know, uh, you know there was a big speculation among, of course, the it conspiracy wasn't the Trump theory. People? No, it wasn't them either. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, it's been claimed now by a group of people, artists called the most famous artists. That's the name of their group. And um, that's the origin of these monoliths, basically, uh, that just basically, per- you know, appeared in different parts of the world. And, uh, you know, they put them up and took them down. And they did it as a publicity son, Jay, just like, you know, what we thought. Uh, we figured that somebody was going to make claim to this at some point. So uh, the group called the most famous artists. Uh, has taken to Instagram J uh, the past few days to post pictures of the monoliths, actually. And they're actually selling them. So they're like $45,000 for a monolith. They can actually fabricate one for you and, and ship it off to you if you really are into that kind of meaningless bullshit. And if you want to have a piece of metal uh, in your yard that uh, costs you $45,000. 40, $45,000 yes, for something that no one is going to remember in a month. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, it's... It's silly, but again, great publicity. I mean, look, these people obviously made a, a pretty big footprint as far as getting the name out there 
And, uh, you know, all, all across the world. I mean, not only here yeah, in the I United mean, States, and mm-hmm. Europe as well. So it's, it's you know, across the, across the pond, as they say, you know? Yeah, that was about as awkward as it could be. Across the <laughs> pond, as they say. <laughs> Indubitably hey, good sir. That's what they say. But uh, the <laughs> founder of this group, his name is Matty Moe, right, Jay? And, of course his uh, name is Matty Moe. <laughs> he really couldn't comment on how the installations were done because of legalities of the origin and all that stuff. So, um, B14 but he, classified. Yeah, well, it's not all that. It's pretty much he, they constructed it and they got it out there at some point in, in the middle of the night. And, you know, that's pretty much what happened. Um, but he does promise that there's going to be more of these popping up in the more days and weeks coming along. So, and he says, listen, you know, what better way to end this messed up you know, year of 2020 than to have some kind of, you know, something cool to look forward to and see where the monoliths are going to pop up next. So I, I can't fault the guy for that. And you know what? Great, great marketing, great publicity, very well done. I mean, I, in, in yeah. this day and age, really well done. What do you yeah, think, Jay? I, I don't know. It's a bit over the top for my particular taste, uh, and I had a bright green Camaro. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, yes, did. So it's a bit over the top for my particular taste. I mean, I get it. He's got his name out. He's, you know, him and his brothers, Eeny, Meeny, Miney, Mo. Mm-hmm. They all uh, got their name out there, and that's, that's cool. I just... <laughs> There's got to be something better we could do with our time. There just has yeah. to be something better we could do with our time. Aren't there problems that we should be trying to solve? A lot of problems. Sociologically, problems. economically, you know. Yeah. Easily, yeah. I mean. Um, again, though, you know, uh, I'd rather see something like this than a lot of the other bullshit that's going on right now. You know what I mean? I. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> it was. It was a um, a welcome break. Right, it was. It, it kind of broke some of this, the yeah. severity and 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 uh, the heavy shit that's been happening this year. And uh, yeah, it's a good way to end it off with a laugh, you know. Yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah. Just at this point, why the why fuck not? not? F it, right? <laughs> F it. We'll do it live, bitch. <laughs> okay, we'll do it live. <laughs> oh, oh well. Please, oh. Well, listen, now we know what the, the, the answer to this mystery that's been, you know, plaguing all of us for the last couple of yeah. weeks here. And Eeny, um, meeny, mighty mo. They yeah, got mighty, mighty mo. So, uh, you know, kudos to them and good luck to them in the future. And you can actually go to their Instagram page, Jay, if you're interested. In, just look up um, the most famous artist on Instagram. And they actually have pictures of the monolith as they, um, you know, uh, are constructing them and fabricating them. So it's kind of cool. You can see some of the behind the scenes of I, uh, the fabricators. I also could just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that too. You can do that too. Uh, but yeah, you check it out. So uh, that, you know, puts a stamp on that mystery, Jay, that lasted for a couple of weeks. But uh, the other subject, Jay, that I wanted to kind of bring up and talk about, which was another piece of information that kind of snuck under the radar and a lot of people uh, just really didn't talk about it because, you know, a lot of stuff is going on in the news right now, especially with the election yeah. stuff and all that stuff that's going on with that. So that's pretty much overshadowed everything else. Hasn't it, though? On. Oh, absolutely. That's all you see on Facebook. That's all you see on social media. It's all you fucking all you hear see. about. Yeah, it's all, all you, you hear about. about. It's the biggest thing since Slice it's Bread, amazing. man. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's so. Crazy. One of these pieces of uh, news that kind of flew under the radar, um, former Israeli space security chief says extraterrestrials exist and Trump actually knows about them. And he says he claims that Trump was actually going to say something about them this year, but decided not to for some reason. So um, he basically quote, he was quoted on saying a galactic federation has been waiting for humans to reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are. Uh, this guy's name is Haim Eshed. So that's uh, the former Israeli space security chief. Um, that, of course, when he said that, uh, everybody was like, what? <laughs> if I know? Yeah, like, what the hell? Did this guy Holy just say shit. that? Like, but if there's anybody that would have inside information on that, it would be him, right? I mean, probably. 
Right. I mean, if you're I the mean, freaking I mean, dude, base security chief. Dude, hide in the shed. He was he was up there hiding the shed. This guy, he, mm-hmm. he had the no. I just mm-hmm. – he could just be trying to piss some people off and throw the shit on his way out too. <laughs> could be. Well, he also claims that um, there's actually a cooperation – um, and agreements between, uh, and that's actually signed, uh, between the U.S. government and the aliens to have underground bases here in the United States and other parts of the world. And um, also on Mars, where they would send, like, American astronauts and alien representatives and back and forth. So, dude, there's a lot of this craziness you, this guy is saying, you know. Did you hear what Elon Musk said about Mars? What did he say? I'm he curious to see. He wants to die on Mars, just not on the landing. Okay. That's an odd way to, like, that's an odd thing to even fucking think about. Like, why would you want to die on a planet that... Bro, he's an odd dude. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, again, yeah, you're talking about... He's Elon an odd Musk. dude. <laughs> you're talking about a guy who built, marketed, and sold flamethrowers to the public. Uh, you're... That's true. That's true. And he pushed that photo of that car that he supposedly put in outer space. Do you believe that he did that? you think that's true? I do. I you do. think that's really out there? I do. For real? He is okay. fucking, he's crazy and has a shit ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> I got yeah. you whatever the fuck he wants. He's like the modern day Tony Stark, right? I'm just waiting it for really him to come is. out with the fucking Iron Man suit, right? He, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> um, if anybody's got one, it's him. It's him, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, you know, getting back to the point here, this story here, Jay, you know, Ashed, the guy, Um, the ex-security chief or space security chief, he added that uh, President Donald Trump was aware of the extraterrestrials' existence and had been on the verge of revealing this information, Um, but he did it because he wanted to prevent mass hysteria. And, uh, you know, that's the age. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Do you think we're ready for that, though, Jay? You don't think we're ready for something like that? Um, (laughs) You, You don't think our minds are not... We've not seen enough alien movies, Jay. I mean, it's been fucking pounded into our head for the last... I, if, if it were done right, mm-hmm. I think we could. Uh, after 2020, mm-hmm. I really... If, yeah. if they came down peaceful and benevolent, we could strike up some form of intergalactic yeah. relationship uh, trying to build on each other's strengths and, and mutual uh, wants and benefits. I couldn't see why not. Uh, might actually be a uniting force for the planet. Yeah, it could be. Or so the rednecks could also get out the shotguns and start shooting at them. <laughs> I would wait, you know? It's going to be a good time. That, it's going to be a party. That, uh, sausages. that will not be good. <laughs> no yeah, bueno. you great damn fucker. Yeah, oh, I can already see it now, Jay. I just, oh gosh. That's what, I see it. I already, like, I've already seen it in my head. But uh, yeah, well, listen, I mean, again, so this is a really interesting story. You know, this guy is shed. He oversaw the launch of, you know, all these satellites um, into space. You know, he said that he was only speaking out now because things are changing. People are actually having a more receptive mindset to the thought of extraterrestrials out there. So that's Again, why he's saying all this shit, all this shit we've been through in 2020. I think people are just, I mean, look at this year. And it's been a hell of a year right. with the COVID and uh, the election stuff. You have all the Epstein stuff finally come to a head. You, I mm-hmm. mean, there's so many things that just right. have built upon you. You have people being far more comfortable with their sexuality. You have a much more open conversation about the racial divide and systemic injustice. And you, you have people who are, are kneeling during the end. You have so much going on right. that... I think people are open to it. I really do. I think that as a, as a society, while we still have many, 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 many issues we need to work out, I think we're getting to a point to at least we're more woke, mm-hmm. if you will. Right. Well, Jay, you know, it's funny because, you know, and I don't, I don't want to get too political here because we don't like to get into politics here in our, in our podcast. But We try not to, I, yeah. Yeah, we try not to, and we don't care which way. No, I don't give a fuck. We don't give a shit. So, but one thing that I will say, and people made fun of him when he said this, but remember in May of like this past year, 
where he said he was going to come out with the Space Force and all that shit. Yeah. And everybody was kind of ridiculing him and saying, oh, you know, what the fuck is wrong with this guy worrying about space? Maybe that was maybe the kind of thing that he was going to say of what was going to happen. You know what I mean? Maybe that was the, 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 like the tipping hat that he was going to kind of come out and say, hey, listen, this is the reason why that we have to kind of do this. You know what I'm saying? It might have been, man. It might have been. Think about it. I mean. We'll never know. It makes sense. It makes sense, right? It makes sense. Donald Trump, for all his follies, uh, the guy wasn't much of a bullshitter. He he was uh, an expert salesperson, but he wasn't a bullshitter. But he's also a reactionary guy. Yeah. He's never the one who throws the first punch. He, no. He's kind of like waits to get punched in the face and then says, fuck you. And then, you know, kind of just, that's how he is he's reactionary. So that's why I think he kind of was coming out with that because that was his reaction to what he found out. Maybe who knows? It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. possible. Well, again, the uh, UFO conspiracy uh, continues um, in the conspiracy theory realm. And um, the UFO disclosure is always a point of contention because, you know, it's been so many years now, Jay, you know, that what now we have government agencies have pretty much admitted to all this stuff and, you know, all across the world, not only the United States government, governments all across the world, um, Israel is, you know, Israeli, uh, the Israeli government have come out with, you know, saying that, yes, UFOs exist. This yeah. guy, you know, all across the world, you Russia, it just, it's, I, I think more the thing. it's, and I think you're right, Jay. I think it is we're at that time where I think we can handle some kind of information like that. So, again, we'll see what happens and we'll see who's the one who's going to actually come out with this information and bring on this new world. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's it for uh, As the World Burns, Jay. And um, I think that pretty much puts a stamp on that. But um, that brings us to our next. Uh, segment here jay which is what the f florida man so uh, again a very popular segment here on dark fringe radio just to give people a little bit of backstory this is a little segment that jay does where he finds a story about some craziness here in the state of florida that only news headline so uh jay (laughs) what do you have for this week for what the f florida man well william i'm gonna I'm going to go ahead and feed this one to you slow, nice and easy. <laughs> All right. Just like that. Baby birding it. Timon. I mean, just <laughs> nice and gentle. I'm just going to feed Baby it Baby bird. Slow. Baby bird. <laughs> Authorities in Florida mm-hmm. are searching for an armed quadruple amputee <laughs> who's reportedly been on the run. Since Tuesday, they're hoping to question him about his involvement in a double murder. So, headline, Mm -hmm. police say man with no hands or legs is on the run and armed. Okay, let me pause this uh, story real quick here, Jay. How is a quadriplegic on the run and also armed and dangerous. Please explain this to me here, Jack, because I am certainly intrigued here. This is uh, very interesting. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you had an answer. <laughs> there's symmetry, though. There's, there's poetic beauty. In, uh, I mean, can't you see that cute little Frisbee just running down the road? Hey, you guys. I mean. I, oh, I don't know. I don't know. So that is interesting. Please continue with so the story. So Sean, Sean Petrozon, Petrozno. There you go. <laughs> we'll go with that. Thirty Spanish reportedly fella. lost his legs, hands, and parts of his arms to bacterial meningitis years ago. Police say he moved uh, in with his parents last week after separating with his wife and missed some serious financial issues, which will come when you lose, you know, everything. Yeah. Uh, Both of his parents were found dead Tuesday morning after Sean's mother, Nancy, failed to show up for her job as a school teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was last seen in an ATM by the surveillance camera, although the police say he's currently a person of interest, not the official suspect in the uh, murders, but he is armed with a gun in Orlando. (laughs) 
How is he armed? He has no arms. <laughs> you have to have arms to be armed. No? Apparently not. Apparently no. you can kill your, your parents. Wow. What a bizarre gun story. And go on the run with neither hand nor leg. That is a bizarre story. meningitis. Yeah, okay. listen, that, that happens. I've, I've heard of stories of that. But, man, that is so crazy, man. I mean, like, who does that? And then how does a guy like that get away? Dude, your guess is as good as mine. I, that's pretty smooth. That's some. That's pretty good shit. Uh, yeah, he had yeah. to have it just right. That's. I, I guess when you can't masturbate, you have a lot of time to think about shit. <laughs> oh, jeez, Jay. <laughs> well, far. yeah, that's an interesting far. story. Jay. I mean, it's yeah. true. Is that too much? I, no, it's it's when you don't have enough time to wax your car. Or... <laughs> you know, when you don't have the legs to carry yourself, I, I don't. Hey. I get it. I get it, man. What a bizarre story. But again, of course, you can only find here in Florida. So, Jay, thanks so much for what the F Florida man for this week. We really do appreciate you bringing the the no arm bandit. Really appreciate that one. So, yeah. Um, well, listen, I was uh, guys. To give him a hand. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely had a leg up on the cops. Oh, he certainly did. <laughs> he beat him by a foot. Oh, he certainly did. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, anyways, guys, uh, we are going to get into our next segment here in a minute, uh, which is the Tolpas, um, the thought form. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, just stick around for more Dark Fringe Radio. Hello, I'm Douglas Sardano, author of American Conspiracies and Cover-Ups. And you're listening to Dark Fringe Radio. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us back here at Dark Fringe Radio. Uh, I am your host, Will Martinez, of course, here with Jay Galosi. And uh, we have a great subject here for you tonight. And we're going to be talking about the tulpas, which is the thought form. And, it's a great um, fish. You yeah. catch <laughs> real lean meat. No, no, you got to play it, which is right. That's the uh, you catch them all of the keys, those tulpas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but tulpas, though, Jay, is uh, something really interesting, Jay. It comes from actually the eastern culture um from the buddhist kind of uh the bronx no no the buddhism uh religion um it's a tibetan term basically and it means manifestation and why this is so important jay is because there is this theory of the tulpas and this theory is basically saying that people can basically create things by using their energy of concentration and manifestation so Again, Jay, um, it's something that, like I said, is derived from that Tibetan and Buddhism, you know, culture. And yeah. it, it's really kind of come over here to the Western side as well. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, a lot of people think, hey, that could be the answer for aliens or Bigfoot, for instance, you know, since we've never caught anything as far as Bigfoot. We know we talked about that last week as well. You know how Bigfoot has just been really no solid evidence of that. <clears throat> and again, maybe it, it's a tulpa. Maybe it's something that we have developed in our minds and given enough energy and concentration that it's actually manifested itself in that way. Um, there's actually some current um, examples of this here, Jay, too. Okay. One example, for instance, is the Slender Man. Now, of course, you know the Slender Man, we've seen. You know, pictures of the Slender Man all on social all media. Place. Yeah. And, of course, there was a movie uh, that came out. It was, I think it was a year or two ago. And there was also uh, that case that actually happened after the Slender Man came out where right. two girls uh, basically stabbed another girl. Stabbed that one chance. Like 18 right. times. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this all started off a creepy pasta story on Reddit. Right. Yep. That's all it was. That's where it started from. That's the just, that's just like just like anything. It's just one little spark. That's and, exactly uh, it. Boom, big. Yeah, I mean it's it's gotten so big to the point where you have people actually killing other people uh, in honor of this particular being. Yeah. You know, movies have come out. It's all over the internet. It's all over social media, and again, it just derived from like what you said, Jay. It was like a little tinder box, and it just caught fire and just Ooh. one story off a of creepy boss off of Reddit. And then next thing you know, you know, this guy, this entity is everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. everywhere. 
So and, that's an example. It's an example of a tulpa. Well, you know, there's something to be said, though. I mean, I've seen things be manifested. I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. poof, I have a beer. But I have seen people use powers of manifestation to gain and attain things. Uh, I've seen people use it to uh, get to a certain point that they want to get to. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much I believe about manifesting hard physical objects. Um, mm -hmm. Things like the Slender Man, mm -hmm. I think that's an imagination run wild. You know, there's with social media these days, things can just catch viral quick. And I mean, viral, it really is a virus. It spreads like COVID. I mean, just if you're in the room, the guy you got the whatever that newest room. meme is. It's suddenly it's on your phone. Like you just walk past person. The guy their on the phone, skateboard their drinking phone. the fucking ocean spray. Yeah. To <laughs> Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> A 40 second video that just caught fire. That, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, we follow things. We, everybody looks for false titles. I mean, just look at Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. So you mix those things in, and yeah, I think it's the power more of manifestation of imagination. Mm -hmm. it, but it's crazy how things like that can come to be. I mean, yeah, yeah, I've seen it happen. It's and you see it every day. And again, a good example of that is Slender Man. That's something that's more you know recent in our times. But there's also other stories. You know, there's also um, a very interesting story about this guy. He's an author. His name is uh, Stan Gooch. And he was like an author of like uh, sci-fi stuff. He did like creatures of the inner space and um, stuff like that, you know, sci-fi horror mixed stuff. But he actually uh, talks about an encounter or story that he had, you know, that where he attended a seance and um, it was in Coventry in England. And uh, basically they, he basically felt like he manifested a, uh, what would you call it? An uh, ape man, almost. Do you know what I mean? Um, ape man. Yeah, an ape man. Uh, that's basically what they were seeing. Like it was a silhouette of an ape man. And then as time progressed, you know, and people were talking about it more and more, it just became a thing that he started dreaming about a lot more and more and more. And he just decided to kind of forget about it, um, you know, and just like kind of put it away. And it just never, you know, it never reappeared ever again, you know, in his dreams. So again, it was something that started in a seance and, you know, and it started from there and it just grew, you know, into something that other people were talking about it, you know, it started appearing in his dreams, you know, kind of like a Freddy Krueger kind of thing, you know, you start talking about it, you know, you know, the whole, whole trope about the whole behind that movie too. Sorry to bring that movie up again. You know, we seem to bring it up all the time, but the, you know, he gets more power from the fear. Thanks, Will. I didn't want to sleep tonight. <laughs> but he gets more power from the fear of these people, right? That's the I thing. know. So that's the Tulpa thing. That's the whole thing behind the Tulpa, giving that energy, you know, giving that fear in, have, and it's feeding it. Have you ever had a dream so powerful, Will, that <laughs> something that happened in a dream stuck with you when you came out of it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that, that's kind of how I, how I have imbued this uh, tulpus fish that we're talking about tonight. Um, <laughs> is that it's like, uh, kind of like things that your, your body reacts to because your brain imagined them into existence. Uh, I know I've had nights where I've gotten advice and woke up with sore, being sore and having bruises and uh, you know, because I spent the night before mm -hmm. coming to blows with someone for some reason, and or, or uh, you just wake up with this kind of a feeling you just can't shake, like like something has happened. Mm -hmm. um, you could like, carry it with you. Oh yeah, so that's kind of how I feel. That's what I've seemed to come up with. So again, Jay, okay. you're, you're talking about like waking up with bruises and stuff on your body that you don't know how you got. Yeah. Okay. So in the Hispanic culture, Jay, what we believe and that happens a lot to, you know, a lot of people I know in my family, um, a lot of people believe that that's a witch touching you. So, I mean, be as that may, 
that is, you know, again, another example of how cultures kind of have their own rendition. I mean, it wouldn't exactly not be par for the course for me. <laughs> I have pissed off enough women in my life. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, uh, again, that's what they believe, uh, you know. It, it, and there's all these other examples of this here, Jay. Um, there's oh, yeah. another one. Uh, this guy, his name is Richard Freeman. He is um, a zoologist, and he was a former zookeeper. And okay. in the summer of 1997, he had an interest in this whole Tulpa thing. You know, this was something that he, you know, stumbled upon. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to create a Tulpa. I'm going to make something up. So he did. He kind of created this deity. It was called Aklak Nacha. Yeah, right? So it uh, appeared. I'm sure. <laughs> it's, um, it was actually a spider deity that he created. Right? And it actually appeared in a book that was published um, originally in 1934. And it was described as a terrifying, malevolent um, spider that had like a human-looking hairy face and spidery limbs. So that's what it looked like. And he decided to create this tulpa. And he feels that there was a very high degree of success um, as he did it. Because what he did is he constructed an altar um, uh, for this spider god in the cellar of his house that he was renting out at the time. And, Not uh, creepy at all. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. If you put energy into this shit, you can really do something. And that, again, you know, that kind of goes into like the uh, Santeria culture, uh, religion, because yeah. a lot of that Santeria is doing rituals to do uh, an intent uh, or to uh, receive a blessing or to an intent to do something. So you know, you do these rituals, you give these things power. And of course you're kind of creating this tulpa in a religious type of way, you know, to give you this power or to get these things back. Um, but in this case here, you know, he's like, you know, I'm just doing this for shits and giggles and I want to see if this actually yeah, works. I'll, I'll make a spider because nothing could go wrong. <laughs> so then he, you know, he hung it all this up in the cellar. He had all this shit hanging and he actually um, created prayers and um, rituals for this tulpa, just out of nothing. He just created the shit, right? And um, he said that he actually one night woke up and that spider being was in his room, Jay. Yeah. I got four words for dude. Get a fucking <laughs> hobby. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, why would you fuck with that stuff? Well, the thing why is, why would you fuck with that stuff? Well, the problem is, Jay, he didn't encounter what would happen, which was that these things that you create eventually lose the control of your mind. So they kind of, kind of like if you were to think of, you know, like when two babies are like kind of like twins are like inside the stomach and they kind of like go blue, 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 like kind of thing like that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's what the kind of is that, is. Is that technical process. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Bro. <laughs> Listen, I am not being technical right now. Forgive me. And I have friends that are doctors, so I know they're probably shaking their head right now. Um, oh, but, my Christ. I know. It's great. But that's basically what's happening. This tulpa is like removing itself from you. And it's becoming its own entity at that point. And then it does whatever the fuck it wants. So that's yeah, the problem. But there's still kind of blood on your hands, bro. Oh, no, no that's doubt. That's a lot no of doubt. responsibility. You're, that's all on you. And that's a lot, man. I, I wouldn't want to shoulder it. No, listen, again, I totally get it. You know, and, but these things do exist. You know, this, you know, again, you know, another one that we're talking about that's more recent that's come out probably in the last 10, 15 years that you never heard about before, because we certainly never heard about it when I was a kid. And when you were a kid was black eyed kids, these black eyed children that are supposedly being seen around. Yeah, that's that's a new phenomenon. That's not something that's old. You know, that's another thing that was created, um, you know, with these with these black eyed children. So, and you, you know, the story behind that, that I think we've talked about it before, but that's where, you know, supposedly these people are having stories of these kids coming up to their houses, knocking on the door. And then when they look at the kids, these kids have completely black eyes. And that um, the whole thing is, is that if they get inside your house, you're pretty much done. You're, you're dead. They're going to kill you. 
And that's what the whole story is. And so the whole thing is, is that if you don't let them come inside your house, you're good. They're not going to do anything to you, but if they get in, you're dead. So, you know, again, this is a tulpa that's been created by people and that's been perpetuated. And, you know, we make fun of it too. I've, you know, the opening of our old, the show, we talked about black eyed children, you know what I mean? And so it's, it's become a trope in the, you know, the paranormal field and, um, you know, more and more people. Yeah, again, are, that's another one we probably could have done without. Yes. Why can't, why can't anybody make like <laughs> the beer spewing <laughs> taupa? Yeah. Why, why can't it just be like, Voluptuous. <laughs> yeah, the, the voluptuous tulpa, right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right. Candy tulpa. Like, yeah. why is it always gonna be this like dark, demonic? You know, I will steal you so. That's how it is, though. That's wow. that's the problem. Why? Once it separates from you and it becomes its own entity, it just fucking it always takes a a south turn. Fortunately, yes. so yeah. So, like, again, don't fuck with the people. People, yes. Stop it. Leave Topas alone. Stop creating uh, your own energy. You know, and that goes, you know, there has a lot to be said about people, um, intention. Like when you say things out loud, Jay, too, that has, you know, you know, somebody who says, oh, I'm so stupid. You know what I mean? And you yeah. keep saying that to yourself over and over and over again. Yeah. That becomes something that you start to believe slowly and slowly yeah. more and more. It becomes a voice pattern. Exactly. And, you start speaking that stuff into existence. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that you're going to get dumber and dumber, but you're making, no, the, you start to believe but there it. is. Yeah. It, it's just like that, that old science, science experiment, right? You right. take two plants and you, you do everything the same. You give them some amount of sun, water, exactly the same. One you talk nice and polite to, and the other one you yell at, the one you yell <laughs> out doesn't live anywhere near as long. And when you talk nice to grows, well, that you makes fucking sense, motherfucker. It? <laughs> I'm not saying it wasn't a fun experiment. I'm not saying oh. it wasn't excessively cathartic for me, but oh, it was great. I do yeah. feel partially <clears throat> bad that that plant had to die such a horrible, horrible death with such a terrible, terrible life. <laughs> well, again, yeah, I, it's all about intention, Jay, and the energy that you put into it. And again, this guy, you know, we talked about the guy with the spider one, and you know, all that intention that he put behind it by making an altar and all that stuff. You know, you do enough of that stuff, and that's that's what happens. You know, you know again, a Bloody Mary. How about that's another one, right? That's been one since we were kids. Are right? you coming to my house to rock me to sleep tonight? <laughs> no, brother, I don't do that. <laughs> you got your lady to do that for you. <laughs> what? what is with this fucking tangent? You're doing hey. everything you can to make sure that the second I turn out the lights this evening, my brain goes. Whoop, 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 when you hear that one little creak (laughs) you're like oh god (laughs) yeah yeah there it is (laughs) well you know yeah you know yeah i get it yes bloody mary like bloody mary yes yeah another one standing with the mirror thing and don't people don't fuck with these things man but again, do you think do you think that we've given so much of energy into that that urban legend, Jay, throughout how many years now? I mean, what we're forty, so at least thirty years, right? At least our lives, but right. we're gonna go ahead and assume well before us too. Yeah, maybe what? I, yeah, I mean, you're talking about 30, 40 years huh? of of energy just being anything's anything's possible, right? Anything's possible. There are things in uh, different realms or dimensions that have shown their existence, but not in a necessarily directly path. There's nothing to say that we couldn't create a reality with our energy, our negativity, our positivity, even something as little as that, and not give it something, some kind of a spark somewhere else where its interaction is limited to certain, certain areas and times and things. Right. That being said, those things don't usually come over here polite. They don't say no. hello and thank you, sir. May I have a crumpet? They talk, <laughs> No, they certainly do not. Um, and, and again, you that's where... It. Yeah, yeah. And that's where the separation comes into play. Once it separates from you, it's its own entity and it does its own thing. So, um, again, there's, I, I'm sure we could probably figure out so many other 
tulpas that we've created throughout the time. You know what I mean? It's oh, just, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing to me that we haven't realized it more of a society that we do this to ourselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? That we kind of fall for it. It's, it's a great trick that we fall for, you know? We're not the brightest. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But that's, uh, that's an avenue for you and me to talk about stuff like this so that we could help open up and, uh, you know, open up some of these people's eyes about things like Thank this. Thank Christ. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, uh, well, Jay, I think that's it for Topos for tonight. I think I'm Topoed out. Um, I don't want to create anything. So <laughs> uh, I think that's uh, a pretty good ending to the subject for tonight. And Jay, okay. uh, before we say goodbye to everybody, uh, we have one last segment, which is uh, what to watch. And this is a segment that you do, Jay, uh, where you uh, give us a recommendation of something that you've seen that uh, – you think uh, is as of worthy uh, for us to watch as you. So please give us a recommendation for this week for what to watch. Uh, on ESPN plus they have um, uh, 30 for 30 ESPN plus 30 for 30 on Tito versus Chuck. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a big UFC guy. Big MMA guy. I, I enjoy watching all the fights. Uh, I, I try to follow him as often as I possibly can. I will be watching the ones this Saturday with uh, Mr. Tony Ferguson, El Kikui. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it really gets into the basis, the, the timelines of as UFC was really building its, its head of steam and how, uh, just how big those two played as far as the cogs that created this thing. I mean, mm-hmm. they really were the right guys at the right time that just the right balance. Uh, Chuck had that look. Tito had the mouth, and they just—it's it, hard to get better than that, you know. It's it's adult man soap opera. Yeah, and it's a great story. I mean, you go from uh, you know friends to bitter rivals, <laughs> and you yeah, know, a lot of shit talking between two camps and yep. fights outside the ring um, as yep. well. And yep. um, it it got nasty, and you know. It, I was, I was upset to see that last fight happen because it shouldn't have happened. That last fight shouldn't happen. I it mean, should have never. Yeah, it should have never. Tito should have retired a few years ago. I mean, he was, he's, you know, he's an average MMA fighter right now. He's okay, right? He's not. He's not Tito. He's Ortiz. not bad, and he's not great. He's he should be at this point. He should be done, though. I mean, he yeah. really is got there. But um, oh, ow, sorry. Uh, but Chuck, a hey, guy's 50 years old. He's had so many fucking concussions and knockouts. Nasty, nasty knockouts. Bad they knockouts. Fight you. Yeah. And uh, they, nobody should have approved in the fight. Shame on Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, that was a bad one. And I, I don't, and I can understand why, you know, Dana White doesn't like Oscar De La Hoya because he put that fight on. He should have never put that fight on. And no, God, no. And that's why he wanted Liddell to retire when he did. He's like, I'm not putting him back out there. You know, he put him that last fight. I think it was against uh, Rich Franklin. Yep. And he looked good against him. He looked great. Until? Until one pity pat punch that just hit him, and then that was it. He's got the old night-night button now. That's it. Yeah, once you get knocked out like that, you get touched real quick, and you can just fall asleep. So, Yeah, another one. Things happening to him. Mm-hmm. I, that guy should just retire and go be a model and bang hot model chicks. BJ Penn, another one. BJ Penn. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, why are you chin, still fighting? His chin got glass fast. I was like, why are you fighting still? Like, you were like in UFC, no like sense. 17. Like, stop. It's enough. Enough is enough. So, enough oh, you is know, enough. another one is like that, uh, which I, he needs to retire already because I, 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 no, there's another one, though. You know who's another one? Diego Sanchez. Yes. I'm like, every time I, I'm like, are you still fighting? And then, you know, he'll pull up a win here or there against a no name guy. And then he'll go on a three, like fight, you know, losing streak. And I'm just like, yeah. And he gets knocked out yeah. every time. I'm just like, time. dude, stop, stop. Enough is enough, man. You know, you're going to be, you're going to be brain dead. You know, you're not going to be right. You so might anyways, already be. Maybe, maybe. But that's a great suggestion, Jay, for uh, what to watch 30 for 30. That's uh, Tito versus Chuck. And, uh, Tito versus Chuck. Yeah, check that out on 30 for 30 on ESPN+. Plus. 
So uh, that's Jay's recommendation for what to watch. So um, that's it for uh, that for Jay uh, tonight. And I uh, just wanted to bring the, the audience in for the outro and say how you can listen to the podcast. Darkfringeradio.wordpress.com. Make sure you go there. Make sure you subscribe to all our stuff. And uh, whatever streaming service that you use, make sure you subscribe. Give us a rating. Uh, we really do appreciate that. And, um, of course, our social media, Dark Fringe Radio at uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter as well. So uh, anything else to add for the outro, Jay? Don't make things that you don't want to have other people have to clean up. Just <laughs> stay in your lane. <laughs> okay. That's a public service announcement by Jay Galosi tonight. So <laughs> we really appreciate that. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, uh, that's it for tonight for Dark Fringe Radio. I am your host, Will Martinez, with my host, Jay Galosi, right over here. Thank you so much for joining us again on another adventure of Dark Fringe Radio, and we'll see you guys again next week.